Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, some more, I'm going to call it vector manipulation for physics. And um, what I mean by this is these are just a couple of things that we end up doing in physics a lot with vectors um, that aren't so necessarily standard things. Um, the first thing is the dot product. The dot product is a way of saying how much two vectors have in common. Okay? And that's just my way of thinking of it. I don't think that's a that's not a standard way. Uh, the dot products is pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, really what we want to do is um, if I have two vectors, and let me draw them coming out of the same spot. Let's call that A, and let's call this one B. And just for the sake of argument, I'm going to draw that B so it's on the horizontal axis. Um, in some cases, what you want to do is it's, it's not A times B, but it's the part of A that's pointing in the same direction times B. Okay? And this part that's pointing in the same direction, if there's an angle theta in between them, is A times the cosine of theta. So really, the dot product and we write it like this, which causes a lot of problems. A dot B. So this doesn't mean multiplied by. This means dot product. It's uh, you know there are a couple of ways we multiply vectors, but um, this is one of them. But this is a specific. This is the dot product, and that ends up being magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between them. Okay, and this, you know, you could do it the other way. You could find out what component, let me try that down here. Here's A, here's B, and we want to find out, again, sort of how much they have in common. I want, let's take a look at what part of B is in the same direction as A. So if I look at A as my, as that line as my axis, and this is theta, then I want to draw this as right triangle, then this would be, and you can sometimes think of it as the projection of B on A. Um, this is going to be B cosine theta. But you see still, if we multiply this together as a dot product, it ends up being A times B cosine theta, which is exactly what we had before. So you just take the magnitudes and the cosine of the angle in between it. Um, You'll see this in work. Work is an example. Work is going to be the dot product of the force and the displacement. So in other words, if I have a force in this direction, but the object moves in this direction, I don't so much care about all that force that's going up. It didn't do anything to make the thing move. No real work is done. Okay, so um, I really just care about the force in the direction of the displacement. So that'd be F cosine theta times the actual displacement. Uh, the next thing we want to talk about, and this is a little tricky, uh, this is called the cross product. Cross product. In a way, it's uh, how how to say how perpendicular the two vectors are. In a way, or how close to perpendicular they are. In other words, if they're perfectly perpendicular, you would multiply them together. But um, since they're not, you have to include another aspect of this, and that would be like this. Let's take this here. Um, a, let's do A and B again. B. If A is, uh, what this time what we want to do is we want to find out how much of A is perpendicular. 
So we take there, that's A times the sine of the angle between them, A sine theta times B. So the cross product, and this is really an interesting uh, thing that we're going to have to talk about in a moment here, is A times B times the sine of theta. And I'm going to put a thing here, I'm going to say the magnitude of that is AB sine theta because the direction of the cross product. This ends up being a vector. Okay, so remember the dot product, you just get two numbers multiplied together. Let me write that, it's a scalar. Okay, this is going to be a vector and I've given you the magnitude we have to figure out the direction, and the direction is a little tricky to put together. But let's just to uh, refresh on this before I go into the whole direction business. Um, one way of looking at this is, is um, or one example of this is, is a wrench, let's say, or pliers here. We've got pliers like this, and we want to turn a nut. Okay, so I'm going to exert a thing called torque torque is a cross product. And torque is the cross product. Well, think of it this way. If my, the force I exert is over here in this direction, it's not going to do anything. Okay? So what I really want is a force that's very close, and we call this the lever arm, the distance to where the force is applied. I'll call that my D. Um, this is, I'm not doing a good job here, but uh, the more perpendicular this is, the more of that force goes to actually turning the thing. So that's where you get a, a, a cross product, a cross product where the closer that sine of theta is to 1, in other words, the closer theta is to 90, the bigger the torque is going to be. So that's an example of where, here, let me put my F here, and this D, it's actually, they use R for this. So here would be your two vectors. Okay, and they're, in this case, they're 90 degrees apart. In this case, they're zero degrees. Sine of zero is zero. You wouldn't have any cross product, any, any torque, uh, in other words, a rotational force. Okay, so now let's talk about the direction. Okay, so now we want to talk about the direction of the cross product. And the direction of the cross product is given by a thing called the right hand rule. Here's my right hand. We're going to use the right hand rule. On the right hand rule, there are a couple of ways of looking at it. The, I think the standard textbook way is like this. If you have, and let me get it so you've got the same view that I've got. Your first finger is your first vector. Your second finger is your second vector. Your, third, your thumb is the third vector. So if you point in the direction of A, let's say it's going to be A cross B. Point in the direction of A and your, put your other finger in the direction of B then your thumb will point in the direction of the cross product vector. Okay, that's okay. That works out all right. Um, and again, that's called the right hand rule. Sometimes you'll see on AP tests RHR. Uh, if you just write RHR down there, that means that the reason for your answer, the direction of your answer is the right hand rule. Um, Another way, a way I like to do it is this way, and I, it's still a right hand rule, you still use right hand. This kills me, by the way, because I'm left handed, so uh, I've very frequently been doing a problem on the board, and I say, okay, so it should be going in this direction, and the students disagree, and I realize, oh, it's because I'm using my left hand. So I've always got to say, right hand rule, which one's my right hand? So here, what I do with my right hand rule is this. I'll take my fingers and I'll point them in the direction of the first vector, A. Then I'll curl them in the direction of B. And then my thumb will end up pointing in the direction of C. Uh, and absolutely you want to look at some, some textbooks to see some examples of this. But I'll give you one right now. Suppose, um, suppose I have a current running in this direction. Um, I don't want to do that since I haven't covered this. Suppose A is in this direction and B is in that direction. Okay, So it's going back away from the screen a little bit like this. What I want to do is I want to take, let's do it both ways. A cross B, oof, this is hard, cross B gives me C. So my direction would be in the direction of my thumb right now. It's a little tough. It's going to be really interesting because you'll see on um, in AP physics tests and uh, problem sets and things like that, you'll see students doing this kind of thing to try to get their hands in the right position. Let me do it the other way. I think A was this direction, B was that direction. What I do is 
point my fingers in that direction, flip them in the direction of B, and then my thumb ends up being pointing in the direction of C. There's a third one, which is if you put your fingers in the direction of the first vector and you push your palm in the direction of the second vector, your thumb will push in the direction of the third vector. So that's the right hand rule for vector cross products.